Hello and welcome to season two of Creative Conversations with me, Paula McGurdy. And thank you for joining me. Um, I can't believe that it's season two. Um, season one, I spoke to 10 incredible Irish artists and um, go check them out if you haven't had a listen. So today I speak to Eloise Flannery and she is the first guest on season two and I was delighted to chat to her. And um, it's always interesting when you've had a few kind of conversations on Instagram and stuff with artists, but you've never spoken to them. So, and Eloise was as lovely as I had imagined. Um, Eloise is a painter and I mean, she does many things, but she, her passion is in painting and she creates beautiful um, nature inspired paintings and her current color palette is so divine, it's beautiful. So you need to go and check her work out. Um, I hope you'll enjoy listening and listening to our conversation and um, hearing more about why she does what she does and where she gets her inspiration. And we also talk quite a bit about um, an artist's value and worth as well, which if you watch me on Instagram, you'll know that that is something that's very close to my heart at the moment. And I love that we went a bit deeper in on our conversation. So enjoy, love to know what you think. Go subscribe, follow, listen, share, do all the things. And most of all, let it bring you some joy as well. Thank you. Hi, Eloise. Hi, Paula. Hi, thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> and nice to meet you in, in I was going to say in real life, but in tech in tech life in whatever it's called yeah thank you so much for coming on today and you are my first guest back on season two which is really exciting so thank you for agreeing to come on and um having a bit of a chat which is fantastic yeah no i'm just thrilled that i've been invited <laughs> honestly I just, i've loved to listen to the podcast so oh um, thank you <laughs> Thank I know you, know you have, and you have been such a, a champion. I know that you've said, like you've sent lots of messages to say how much you've been enjoying them. And I was like, I need to get Eloise on and hear her story, <laughs> which is fantastic. So thanks a million. Um, I guess you know how this kind of works then. And I, I generally just start with the where's and the how's of how you got started as a creative and what that story looks like for you. So. Yeah, um, so I suppose as a kid, I was always kind of drawing and painting, like most kids, I'd say. Yeah. And I have like great memories of, you know, sketching and painting. And yeah. I even, just thinking back, I uh, my mom had this wonderful like big toolbox, and it was filled with like lollipop sticks, glitter, paints, markers. Brilliant. And it was called my make and do box, and. You know, we'd get that up on the kitchen table and I'd take things out and I love just making and doing, <laughs> as you say. And uh, I spoke to school then, I kept up the art and was interested in it. And even when I was around 14, 15, my um, aunt, she was also an artist and uh, she would help hold these like painting evenings in her house every Thursday night. And uh, just me and her daughter, my cousin, would be the kids and then the rest were all adults and Joe was real serious kind of thing. <laughs> when I was that age and we had a tutor, a lovely man and painter, Jerry Switzer, and he would kind of guide and everyone was painting so different, you know, he really just nurtured everyone's own natural kind of style and yeah. all the excitement going over like would be so I think from then as well I was like, I really want to do this, you know. And uh yeah, I, I didn't love remember that. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah, she was real pivotal figure, I think, in my you know artistic pursuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember, like, I suppose after that, I was real inspired. My mom would have, you know, those farmers markets on Sundays. It was like behind Super Value, they had a little car park, and every Friday there'd be this little farmers market, and my mom would be selling like. Uh, her spelled breads and scones and things. Um, and then I'd be at the other end with my paintings, you know, it's like, I don't know, 14, 15. And we I love this, that. Yeah, but yes. And we had this mad pink fluffy umbrella, like it was totally ridiculous over us. <laughs> and yeah, we were there. And I even remember like the first day, the lady who ran the market, 
she came over, I don't know if she's still running it, she could be, but she kind of came over and said, like, you know, a lot of people have tried this now and they've never sold any art, so don't be disappointed now, you know, you won't be the same. And I was like, well, that's not very, like, encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> and then I sold two pieces and I remember she came around the end of the day and I was like, now they were, like, going for 20 euro, maybe 15 euro, you know. Yeah. And then I stayed the whole summer, every Friday I'd be at the market so that was yeah it was That's I guess I'm looking at a real supportive family kind of encourage yeah, yeah kind of thing that's brilliant yeah. uh, I went on then to Crawford to okay. study fine art and uh, got a bachelor degree there and yeah I kind of have mixed feelings about college sometimes um, I think maybe because I was quite young coming out of school. There's only a handful of us that maybe came out of school and maybe a lot of the rest of the year were quite mature and older. They may have more life experience. I think that would have been probably a bit better or more confidence to be able to stand up for your work and stuff. I think I didn't have that voice yet. <laughs> so yeah. I found it quite difficult. Yeah. And uh, also, I think I had different expectations that you go when you learn all these different painting techniques and <laughs> it wasn't very like that. <laughs> So um, I felt like I would kind of call myself a self-taught painter, really, because, you know, it's kind of since college that I've really, you know, kind of developed my my style and practice and everything. Um, yeah, but even after college, I felt like it took a long time to rebuild. Like, I barely could pick up a paintbrush or a pencil. You, know, I felt like I was worse than when I went in, which is mad, but um, yeah. So I kind of rebuilt the confidence then afterwards. I think, yeah. And a lot of I think art college can be very like that for lots of people, can't it? Yeah. And I think if you go, I th well, I guess it depends on where you are in your life. But if you go early, it can be really hard on you because I guess, um, I don't know, a lot of art colleges try and tear you down to build you back up again kind of thing. And um, I think you have to be a certain person or in a certain place in your life too. And it depends on your tutors as well. Yeah. And it's kind of like what that lady was saying to you at the stall saying, oh, don't get your hopes up. You know, lots of people have done this and they feel like they're being encouraging, but actually they're not at all. Yeah, yeah. And I think art college can be a bit like that as well, you yeah. know, and so, like you're not the first person to say that at yeah. the end of art college that <clears throat> it was a tricky, a tricky season, you know, of not wanting to do anything or. Yeah, I think it would be interesting like to go back now, like if, you know, if I had a little time portal and go, now with a bit more life experience maybe a bit more confidence yeah would it be a different experience but i had a wonderful like year and peers like some amazing artists and you know if you were struggling somewhere you'd go to your peers nearly we'd all help each other out yeah. and you know to like made lots of friends and sure had a great time like partying everything was a doll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was definitely an experience yeah yeah. Um, I spoke to Holly um, Walsh actually and she went to Crawford as well and she was yeah. saying she was the youngest in her class but she um, felt like it was a really positive experience for her and yeah. so it's just so interesting isn't it I mean I went yeah. to art college later in life and I was 28 when I went and I felt like I had a bit more life experience. I don't know that I was fully confident though then, but I, I did feel like I had more of a life experience and more of a voice to kind of push into my own, I guess, style. But I felt like I missed out on lots of the lots of the class where like 18, 19 year olds. So there was that feeling of, oh, she's the old lady. <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah, so I, I, I don't know that there's any perfect time really. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's you're true, going yeah. to on, you know, some either the dynamics. I've always felt like the, the dynamics between me and, like, I mean, I got on brilliantly with them, but there, there was just, you know, I was married, and you know, it was just yeah. a different life stage, I guess. You know, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you went back now, it would definitely be a different experience. Yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting that you call yourself a self-taught artist, Eloise. Um, you know, even though you've been to art college. Yeah, I guess it's because I really developed my. I 
ended up it was pushed in different directions, I suppose, because it was a lot more conceptual. Uh, yeah. I did a bit of painting, but you know, like my degree show and everything, I did installation and yeah. made these cabinets with lighting, and you know, I loved all that too, and found object. But I think afterwards, uh, you know, I always had this. My first love has been painting, you know, and then afterwards, when I kind of we got into it is when I really just, you know, studied it myself. And I actually met Holly Walsh at a, we did a weekend um, painting. Uh, oh. like the, oh, I can't remember the name, but it was Baroque style kind of painting, totally different to, and in oil. And, you know, yeah. I was like, oh, I've literally learned more in three days than, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was like, it's yeah. amazing. So, you know, like and meeting and actually a lot we even sat for lunch and nearly everyone there had been to our college as well and there was that conversation. You know, it was so interesting to see all different experiences, you know. Mm, so, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't discourage anyone, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean it's an amazing it's it's an amazing yeah. experience regardless. But um did you did they teach you much about the technical side of things? So this is what I'm always interested in. I yeah. guess every art college is it's very different than academics because ac academics you follow like it's a plan of you need to learn this, yeah. you need to learn this, but our college is just <laughs> wide open. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think each college is very different in terms of how they teach. Did you have any structure classes of technique mm -hmm. and learning how to draw, paint, anything like that. How did that work? It wasn't a lot. There was life drawing, but I had tried to get in there, but it was like limited spaces and it was like a lottery, you know, that kind of way. And um, actually, that's funny you said that. Like, I think I'm kind of academic. Like, I love having a thing. You know, in school, I did quite well because I'm like, yeah. you just learn this page off, you'll get these. <laughs> so yeah. when I went in there, you know, it didn't, it didn't matter, like, if I painted for 70 hours a week, you know, and had this accumulation of work it you know it didn't matter how yeah. much you made it was kind of you know in the if you hit the nail on the head with them or if you yeah so that yeah. was something difficult but um no I I really just got into painting afterwards and for me like setting goals like to create a collection you know that was a, one of the first things I did then and I feel like with a goal then you just kind of have to get over your you know fear and just like yeah. go for yeah. it and make yeah. a lot yeah so so when did you come back to kind of creating then holly at what stage did you pick up the paintbrush again and just kind of go yeah go for it? um i think like one of the big times was uh five years ago maybe and then in 2016 i decided i put on this like show and i got this friend of this abandoned building <laughs> in town yeah. and painted the walls, painted the floor, real studio college vibes where you just would throw paint everywhere and make it look yeah. all nice again. And, uh, and I filled it with a collection of paintings and that was kind of the, and I had it opening and everything. That was one of the first kind of moments. And from then 2016, I've just been doing that, like releasing collections and having pop-ups. In my hometown, yeah, and a few group exhibitions too, yeah. Fantastic, and it's in Dingle, is that right, Eloise? It's in, in Dingle. Dingle, is that right? Wow, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. So, can you tell us a bit about your kind of your process? How you start your process? Um, like, do you have a ritual, or do you use sketchbooks? Um, um I don't actually use sketchbooks. Uh, but I do have journals. I write loads. Like I feel like I have loads of journals and little sketchbooks with just scribbles and words. And yeah, I would do a lot of writing when it comes to like creating. And um, I definitely think it's kind of a spiritual practice for me. Like I light my candle. I put on my music. I like making my space all nice and you know uh, just good vibes. And then um, like I guess I'm at that just after releasing a collection, I'm kind of at the the cycle, I kind of work in cycles. So now I'm at the stage where I'm doing all that, all that writing and researching and just really knowing what the feeling I want to have in my work. Mm -hmm. And then I, love, like, I might even write down four or five words of what I, how I want it to feel, you know, and I'll put them up and then like that, I let that dictate kind of the direction of the work. And it's very intuitive process for me, like even, 
cheesy colors. Like I'm really in my pink face <laughs> for like, <laughs> four years now and I don't really see it going. Like I just like that color just makes just lights me up, you know, and it makes me feel yeah. really good. And I just yeah. I even had this massive tube of flowers in pink and sometimes I'll just paint the under layer, you know, with that and allow it to come through and mm. I think um, yeah, I think of just letting yourself go, not questioning that part, you know, mm. and just doing it and then maybe you'll unravel why you're attracted to it or, you know, along yeah. the way. Um, yeah. So, yeah, even my work is quite like a lot of abstract elements and then mixed with um, mm. some kind of detailed, real, you know, real objects or real um, drawings and I like that mix of the both. Yeah. Mm -hmm, definitely. And yeah. I love that you write down your four words. I think that's really <laughs> lovely. I think that's, it's almost like setting an intention. It's yeah. kind of bringing, it's, it's quite meditative. meditative yeah. um, like in terms of writing that down and setting an intention that these are the things that I've been thinking about and they're ruminating with me and I want to bring that to my process and my practice. I think that's lovely. Yeah, even after the last collection drew I had, I got a message from someone and they just said, you know, oh, I love your work. It's light and um, uplifting. And there were two words up on my wall. It's like, oh, that couldn't have been like a better, you know, compliment that someone yeah. actually gets that too or feels it, you know? Yeah. You're not sure how it's, when someone just gets your work or something, it's just an amazing feeling, isn't it? <laughs> It is. It's brilliant. You just feel like you've connected on some level with them, you know. Yeah, it's, you can't yeah. really put words into it, then. Sure, you can't. It's like, no, you can't. Like yeah. deeper, yeah. 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 Um, um, yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about? Do you use um, acrylic or um, oil or what medium? What's your preferred medium? Do you have a preferred medium? Yeah, I definitely I use acrylic mostly. Um, yeah, I used to use oil, but actually I had a lot of skin like flares and things when I painted with oil, and it's really harsh, isn't it? It's like yeah, toxic, really, isn't it? You know? Yeah, so I ended up switching to acrylics, and it just suits me because I'm actually quite a prolific painter. I'm quick. I want to lay down as many layers as possible, you know, and work fast and. Acrylic kind of allows you to do that as well. Mm. And I love that I can mix it with water and really water it down or mediums. And I love dripping and letting, yeah. you know, that to take like the direction of the work. Like I love if I, like one drip can just change the whole <laughs> idea of a painting. I just let that like, tell me what's going to, you know, how it's going to go. Um, it's kind of bad. But no, I do love, and I've started including some like oil pastels now into it. And, yeah a bit of charcoal and really interested in developing our kind of mark making but it's just yeah. a, lot of, a lot of thin washes of layers um for me i'm really interested in that kind of like i suppose the multi-dimensional kind of things in our own world and veils and realms and i kind of like to think that all those layers are those kind of veils between us and i don't know what else <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, so I like to like you know I might have some things and scratch back and you see what's underneath that surface and yeah. Um, so would you say that your inspiration is spiritual? Like I know you've touched on that before, or where would you get your inspiration from? I mean, I guess your words as well, but are you inspired yeah. by anything in particular? Yeah, I feel very much inspired by nature, and I think nature. Mm -hmm can be a little bit spiritual. It can, yeah. I'm especially interested in like the, I suppose, little aspects in nature, like the tiniest flower coming out of a walk and you know it sparks something for me. And it's just incredible how this thing has survived and is so tiny and pretty coming out of this, you know, harsh and battered by harsh weather. And also like uh, animals, you know, a lot of animals that appear in my work would be kind of wild animals kind of have ancient folk in, appear in ancient folklore so they could be hares and bees and I have birds you know and these are all creatures that I, our ancestors would have thought to have connections with different realms or shapeshifters and you know they have this bit of glint in their eye that there's 
yeah, a bit of magic there. And that's where I get a lot of inspiration. Mm. And just even the feeling of being in nature, you know, it's yeah. very, you know, uplifting and grounding and you feel like connected, I think. Connection is a big word as well in my art, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm saying definitely connection is it's one of those things and I think it's back to what you're saying when somebody connects with your work then you think oh that's like that's made it all worthwhile <laughs> yeah, that's, the that's the dream you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. someone else, yeah. or if they feel something first like it's amazing that you've kind of able like this is the dream you know to be making things that weren't there before like it's amazing yeah. you know yeah, so yeah. definitely. And, and Eloise, do you work every work on art every day? Do you like do you have your own studio? Do you get into the studio every day and try and make, or does it you're as you said, you're quite prolific. How do you work in general on a day to day yeah. or week to week? So I don't have like a studio per se, but I do have like a, a spare room at home, but that's kind of ended up being a lot of my storage and packaging and all kinds of books and printers and everything. Um, Mine is all over like, there. Mine's all over there. You just can't see it. <laughs> yeah. um, but I brought like an Ikea desk into our kitchen. I could probably switch this around. And it's just, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I just have that corner of the wall, you know, and my little um, trolley for my paints and my desk and whatever I'm working on, I bring it in there. I like to work you know, I never really have an easel. I never really liked working with easels. And so I like to work flat, you know, when I feel like I can really, movement is really important. Like, you know, especially if I have music on, I want to be able to move my body around and create marks. And uh, yeah, so I would work in here and the dream would be definitely having a big <laughs> studio space where it could be messy, you know. Or renting this house, so you kind of have to be a bit careful. You can't go too wild. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. that would be the dream, and I'd love to work bigger too. I'm getting a real urge to go big, and yeah. yeah. Um, Space yeah. really determines um, how work is, I guess. You know, in terms yeah. of for years, I just, I, I when we were renting in a small apartment I just used to like mainly do like yeah. small little paintings on sketchbooks and stuff and that's why they these were like kind of this size because mm, it was yeah. what was it was it was what my space dictated you know and I think yeah. if you have the space to go bigger like you yeah use the space yeah. then definitely you know yeah. you've got a lovely window out there as well and I also yeah. noticed your Ikea trolley as well as yeah. Ikea trolley. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one and I feel like I have FOMO and I look at them and I'm like, oh, one of these I days I'm going to get one of those Ikea trolleys. Ever. Definitely it's, get it's, almost, it's like an obligatory uh, thing that you see like in artist studios, an Ikea trolley full of paints and paint yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tag you when I get one, Eloise. I'm gonna be like, yeah, yeah. look, I got, I got a trolley. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <It's a goal. laughs> uh, but no, my desk looks out into the garden as well, which is really nice. There's just such nice light in this kitchen actually, is the main reason why I kind of work painting here. It's just a really nice energy here. And um I like to work on like, you know, maybe five, six pieces at a time and I'll have to spread out and then before my boyfriend Shane comes along, I'll tidy everything back up and put it in my little corner. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it, I love moving from piece to piece. I feel like you don't get stuck then. And yeah. Yeah, even though it yeah, might still get stuck, but it does free or give you answers to maybe something in your painting that's not working. Yeah. yeah. Along. I think lots of artists do that, don't they? Like work on multiples at the same time. And yeah. yeah, I think you put yourself under a lot of pressure if you're just working on one at the time. And as you said, then you're like, it's that thing. I love what you said about answers. You're like, you mm. know, moving from one to one, you can figure more things out, I think, in your mind. And then you come back to the other pieces that you're working on with fresher eyes or 
having moved on in a different way in your head from working on another one and then coming back like it's kind of cyclical or something yeah and i think i would my process is very cyclical like that i think even my working day i'd like to get good chunks of the day painting you know mm. i love having like just knowing that's you know even like uh create in collections i feel like i might paint for you know a good few weeks and then after that do all the photographing the one go of all of them and then do all the, the marketing and the listing together and as well even like creating paintings together i find like there's a cohesive energy between them there's like little connection throughout the whole collection because they've been all made together and there's elements that are in each one and yeah it's so it. true because I often find if I do a collection together and then I I try and recreate that then at a later stage, it's all it's like kind of I don't know, it's kind of like getting trying to shift up the gears too fast or you can't kind yeah. of get into your flow in the same way. So I think a collection is a really lovely way to work, you know. Yeah, and, and I think just like that um finding your way you know like that works for me but maybe making different pieces works for other people so i think it's really just have to find what works for you isn't it and go deadlines do work for me like you know yeah. Yeah. Really do. so um yeah and i'd like to like you know then the other thing is there's so much other things as a creative entrepreneur or artist you know that you have to do is like yeah. it's not just the painting it's like all the website design and marketing and branding and content and admin and emails so like there's so much and i think it's just trying to find that balance between them all and i find when i'm doing all computer work or business side of things i'm really in my head and if i try to get into my painting it just as a work because my painting really comes from my body or i need to feel it and the both are so like opposing or something yeah. um like even doing them on different days works for me or maybe going for a walk in between so that you kind of change from one but i do really enjoy the business side of things which is uh um, really my opening yeah i find it could be really creative as well you know even listening i love to you say that because i just don't find it creative at all <laughs> <laughs> you do it really well. Yeah. I think you're very creative with it. Uh, with the business side of things, um, yeah. Well, I suppose maybe the more marketing and <clears throat> yourself out there and Instagram. Yeah, and all that. that's a learning thing, though, isn't it? I think that comes yeah. with time and with you know putting yourself out there. The more and more you do that, the more the easier it becomes. Um, but you're yeah. very good at that too as well Eloise have you done it's any natural, like, sure. you know, <laughs> but I, see? I saw somebody oh I know what it is we watch Queer Eye with the kids and they yeah. love it have you watched Queer Eye at all yeah um, so, yeah yeah oh my goodness the kids love it and yeah. it's, it's so much about empathy and about different people and stuff like one of the guys was wearing a t-shirt and it said confidence is a habit and I was like mm. yes it's so true like you know you just it's that thing of constantly putting yourself out there and you just it's getting used to it it's not it's not something that you know or yeah. you're born and with think, yeah, you know, yeah and if you um, do it every day it becomes like a habit and say if I had yeah. a break like I really get this fear about posting again you know whereas yeah, if yeah. I didn't take that break I would just like yeah oh you know whatever and now, uh, yeah. and if I take any bit of a break, I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I don't know. <laughs> don't don't know. Up again. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. But I think finding, like, especially working on my own uh, at home all day, you know, I find like that listening to podcasts as well, listening to other creatives just talk about the process is just so comforting that you're like, okay, it's not just me. Like, you know, this person yeah. is like flying and they still have the same thing. So even yeah. just that is really like kind of puts you at ease and you don't feel as like I don't know come you. Like, yeah. yeah I think <laughs> it shows you that it um there's many other people doing it and that the feelings that you're experiencing or the things that you're working through are completely normal and it's natural um for many artists and creatives to go through the it's I just love hearing about the process of the ups and downs mm -hmm because yeah. it makes you feel like oh this is other people go through this and this is just oh, fine, you know? yeah there's a lot of like i wouldn't be like uh 
technology like yeah, <laughs> savvy yeah. or anything like there's been yeah. so many hurdles in that um you know we've been with the website and I've moved a lot online now and like it's so much learning and um yeah so it's constant just kind of <laughs> learning <That's internet>. really. <laughs> yeah. and Louise did you do any business courses like to help you through this because I know there are business courses that are like little uh I shouldn't say little that diminishes at all what we're doing, which I don't mean. Yeah. Say. Um, like, did you do any, any course for small businesses or anything like that? Because there, there are some and yeah. uh, figured it out yourself. I did a course at the beginning of the year, which is called Making Artwork, called in with Emily Jeffords. And it's an <laughs> online. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I so, love Emily Jeffords. I yeah. Think. She has gone from strength to strength, hasn't she? And so inspiring, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I love the way that she leads into showcasing her work and stuff. It's very gentle, and mm -hmm. yeah, she's really about slow away. progress and sustainability. And like yeah. that's something that really resonates with me. I think you know because this is like painting is a lifetime work for me. Like I want to be here painting seventy years time. You know, there's no yeah. like trying to get to A and B very quick. It's just wanting to really, and so I think that really resonated with me. And also she talks so openly about running a creative business and financials and, you know, making money, which is like really a th how to be a thriving, you know, artist. And yes, yeah. I found it brilliant because yeah. it was started in March. So pretty much when lockdown happened, so it was like perfect timing, you know, I really could delve deep into it. And, I had a peer group and we've stayed in touch and we meet every week and talk Brilliant. about our art and our business and it's just it's really yeah encouraging everyone's at different levels and doing different things but um I find that's that helped a lot you know mm. and even just honing in it was even a lot on honing in on what you want you know or yeah. what you want to create and yeah and was there a lot of practicals in, in that course then as well? I'm picking your brain now, Louise, because yeah, I've looked at them no. before and thought, ooh. Hmm. Yeah, no, I thought it was really good. Even like the, like really break down the photo, photographing your collection and stuff like that. Like just even things like that. I know you could probably um, get all these resources from different places, but having it all in the one place has been really helpful, you know? Mm -hmm. And even that process of like giving you timelines, like you have, you know, give yourself a week to do all your website listings and the writing and the content, and just I think form those simple formats were really helpful. Like, yeah, and a lot on like branding as well, which is something like I've been looking into, or just kind of I suppose you're as an artist, you kind of have a natural brand, maybe just your name and your style is already kind of your brand, you know. Yeah. It's kind of, I suppose, uh, defining it a bit more, and that helps as well with even your practice. You know, I think it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been really, uh, really, really good. Yeah. Oh, that's really good to hear because yeah, I I have followed her for a long time, and her story is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, yeah, where she, where she began and. You know, know, and now like ten years like, later or something, she's like doing it, and she's yeah, she's living yeah. the dream, isn't she? I'm like, yes, yes I love that. that. Her big studio, and she has like two, three people working for her, and I'm like, yeah, that's the dream now. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, um, definitely. I think that leads nicely, and something that's really been on my heart quite a bit has been value and worth as an artist, and we've mm -hmm. talked briefly about this, and um. I guess recognizing your own value, but also others recognizing your own value and worth as an artist. Do you ha did you get to a stage and realize that that is something had clicked for you, um, in terms of when you decided to be able to step into that and how that looked? Yeah, like I suppose <laughs> I mean, like the first thing that came into my head was even just calling yourself an artist. Like, yeah, I remember I would have always. I'm only I'm full time since last October the seventh. <laughs> I took the leave, so I'm nearly a year, you know. But oh, before yeah, that, I've always that. been waitressing and working yeah. in cafes or restaurants. And if someone asked me what I did, you know, I'd always be like, 
oh, I'm a waitress. And then I, after a few seconds, and I paint, you know. But I remember yeah. kind of the time that I started saying, I'm an artist and I um, <laughs> waitress. You know, that was so hard. I thought that was massive. And <laughs> then just practicing that, you know, and I think even yeah. just calling yourself an artist is so yeah. massive. It's so empowering, you know, and you're yeah. really allowed them to step into that. And um, yeah, I guess like even about the valuing your work and stuff, I feel like I still have a little bit to do, you know, on that. I still feel like maybe I need to, you know, I have family members that are like, raise your prices, <laughs> you know, and you have this fear, it's mad, you know, so it's something like you're constantly, and I might stick on like extra 30 euro and think that's mad, you know, and then, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, it's something you have to keep working on because there's so much, people don't realize, like, it's not just the painting, you know, that's the value. It's all the years before that. All the work that you put in, like, there's so much work that goes into everything, put on a collection, put on a show. And, you know, I think that we need to take all of that into account and really value our work. It's really important. Um, yeah, and I think it allows other people to kind of, like, do the same, which is amazing. And even allows the person to receive it, like, you know, value it. I feel like that's... It's really, really nourishing, like for both, you know, for both sides. It's like a good thing, yeah. <laughs> and it's I would so like true. it to be, yeah, profitable, you know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I just, I just think, and I've said it for a while now, but that whole thing of. It's almost cultural that it's like people think of the starving artists. It's like a long standing joke or something like that, you know. Mm. I just think, you know, there are so many artists who thrive, and I think they're the people to look to. Like, for instance, yeah. like Emily Jeffords or whoever. Or Ashley Lord. I, you know, I love Oh my her. goodness, I love Ashley Lord. I oh, love I love her. Her. <laughs> You know, I love her message to artists, and she's it. just like just she's just a fire under you. You're just like yeah, uh, she's just like know your worth and know your value, and the people who yeah. like you and will come to you, and the people who like your work will spend the money. And even Rowley, my husband, talks about this, like what you're saying about the thirty euro. He's just like if somebody's going to buy your painting at one thousand euros, they're still going to yeah. buy your painting at one thousand three hundred euros. Yeah. You know, if they Absolutely. like your or what yeah. you do. They love what you do and you're bringing mm. so much value to them. And I just think it's not spoken about enough. Yeah. Um, no, Ashley definitely. Lager, she's just she's full so on. Open about it. I love and her. I think that's yeah. one thing as well that I actively was thinking. I was look like that for Emily, Jeffers, Ashley. People who, like just listening to people who are thriving and who are not like being the tortured artists or, you know, yeah. look for them, listen to them. And I think that, you know, you'll get into that. You'll yeah you know, eventually kind of walk into that space or you know become that yeah. kind of yeah definitely but if you're having a down day like draw on ashley like she'll, <laughs> she'll get you off the painting and you'll be like a mad woman after i know so, i've actually <laughs> recorded a clip that she did um on a podcast with um oh what's her name daniela daniela i have her book here oh um, Krista. Krista, yes 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 um, I know Ashley Longshore has been on that a few times and one of the mm -hmm. first times she was on she like just did this mic drop moment of basically talking about the artist and who you are and kind of going out there and she was talking about how the world need ar needs artists I've recorded that and I listened to that regularly yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so it was a mantra, you know and um, because I think so many artists do not understand their value and the beauty that they bring to the world and mm. I just think it's such a shame I think we tend to kind of be like a little bit like hi I'm here and I'm charging but uh, lockdown you know, really um, <laughs> lockdown really revealed I think to the wider world of how valuable artists are, you know. Yeah, Without artists, okay. there's no music, there's no seeds, there's no entertainment, there's, you know, like it was a big, we we're really valued and in a world where like technology is, yeah. you know, um, on the up, I think anything done with the hand is becoming so much more intimate and valuable. Like it's a really, it's the best time to be an artist now, you know. It is, like, absolutely. Yeah. And have, yeah. Go on, Eloise. What are you, what are you no, saying? Doesn't say we just have like you know the all the we no longer have to wait for people to say our artists, you know. 
um, yeah. accepted or good enough or anything. We can just put it out there and we have these yeah. tools like, you know, social media to reach people and someone in Japan can see your art just from, you know, right. so it's definitely a good time to be an artist. And I think so many people bring so, something different to art each time. So mm -hmm. people who, some people who are doing amazingly, like their art would not necessarily be what I would like, but there's always somebody in the world somewhere who is going to like your art in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And I also think it's that thing of, um, yeah, at the moment uh, with COVID and everything, that's been such a huge instigator for so many artists to just really push into what they're doing. And definitely for me, I just was like, right, that's it. This is this is how I deal with yeah. things. This is how I process things. And I think you're dead right. I think just all that beauty in the world, I think that's just, yeah, it just, and just does people good, doesn't it? It does. And even uh, something you mentioned there about, uh, you know, everyone having something to bring to the world like even um you know i would say like as i'm developing i feel like my creative practice is also developing you know like maybe yeah. my palette and i met someone who would have been like one of my earliest fans and would collect my work and she loved my work and you know i met her and she was like no the colors they're just not bright enough I, they just don't do it for me anymore and, we just, <laughs> <laughs> and you know i'm just laughing because i'm like I know, but this is kind of what I'm in, drawn to now, and I have to go with it. Yeah. Well, not being afraid that you're going to lose some people along the way because yeah. you know you're going to gain new people that yeah. you have yeah. a whole new. So I think trusting your process and just trusting what you're doing, you know, as well, and not making for what you think other people might like. I think is a really yeah. because then you're always going to pander. Nobody will ever be happy. And no, no. Be and then you just the art that you make will be you, you'll you know that it's not like yeah exactly. really I guess bringing you joy in in that way but yeah I think you're right I think there's lots of people who will as you as you move along and as you as your work shifts and changes there will be and there's, then there's also that, that that's interesting though Eloise because there's a lot of artists who stay in the same um mm. in the same style for many many years and yeah. I also wonder about that my work has changed like, quite dramatically and I can see it still evolving and changing over time I think it's just it's what I do and um I think also when you're really prolific like you're saying you were saying you're really prolific I, I'm constantly doing stuff but I don't know how it must feel for an artist who has one style that they've done for many many years I wonder does that just mm. that, feel heavy for them that they feel like that they can't move out of that or is, I, I often wonder does it still yeah. bring joy in that as well rather than yeah and like it could I think for you know there's a lot of people that I know have like that have stayed in the same style and I think maybe it becomes almost meditative because you know yes. I think it's like it could be really meditative if they know how it's gonna nearly come out or something and Maybe there's no changes that we don't, we think, you know, but there's tiny, a tiny change for them could be huge, maybe. I'm not yeah. sure. But for me, like, what excites me is not knowing, like, how it's going to turn out. That's what yeah, kind of yeah. makes me really excited. Like, I don't want to know how it's going to turn out because I find so many little magic in those little accidents. And then, yeah. you know, I'll bring that forward to the next thing. And... Yeah, like it is. I think even though my work might be different, you know, each collection might be a little bit um, different, but I think overall they're still very like connected, you know, even just in palette or theme or ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 I'm like, what will I be making in 50 years' time? This is so yeah. exciting. Like, you know, you can be at anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would it look like? Yeah. I know. This is it because when you're 70, you're still going to be doing this, Eloise. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, uh, um, I'm just thinking of what you said at the beginning. I loved that your auntie did these classes and you all sat down together. Oh. And did that. I just, for whatever reason, I was yeah, just she was wonderful. That. Yeah, um, as you get older, she passed you know. away um, eight years ago, mm. and um, but she, she would have been massive and always pushing you know and encouraging you and really letting you go for things and she's very inspiring 
-hmm. And even I find she still, like, if I'm stuck in a painting, I'll often call on her, you know, and things will work out. And yeah, I feel like she's still, you know, very present or very. Present, like, yeah. 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 So, uh, That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> So tell me, what would you say are some of the challenges that you would say that you face as an artist? What things would you find the most challenging? Uh, probably maybe the thing that we chat about earlier is having, putting on all those hats. Mm. I think that balancing all the business or marketing or branding side of things to making the art, I think um, that would be the most challenging. Like. If I could paint all day, that's that's the dream. But you, you know, you have to do all these other things. That Emily Jeffords and her four assistants. That's yeah. what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god! Like, someone do all my packaging and someone do all my emails yeah. and yeah. Like, yeah. So I think it's that stuff that I'm not naturally good at, and then I have to work at like you know technology side of things, and mm. that will be the the most challenging and maybe just balancing time and time management too you know I think I'm good but I could be faffing about there all morning like having about eight cups of tea and then I'll be there's like there's magic oh, in those cups of tea though Eloise there's magic yeah, yeah. in the cups of tea I'm like I'm still working because I'm you know looking at it and <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my painting you know for about 20 minutes that's work you know so it's all in there as well and just thinking I think um, yeah. Yeah, I think the most challenging is just your mindset. I think mindset is everything and to keep, you know, I'm really interested in to keep like working on that. And, you know, I think if your mindset is in a good place, then like that, you will value yourself more. You know, there's all of those things to keep kind of um, working on, I think. Yeah, as an yeah. artist. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. The mindset is huge, isn't it? You know, and yeah. that's what self-belief comes in then as well you know which is yeah a big one for many many definitely for me but for many many artists that's a big Absolutely. one you know, the self-belief yeah. Um, yeah so do you do anything outside of art that brings you joy what what would be the thing I mean obviously as an artist everybody's like oh I could just paint all day long yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think I just get a good buzz off people like spending time with my family and just chatting like and spend time with friends and you know over meals and dinners or going out for walks it's definitely going out in nature you know yeah. and um yeah that would bring me a lot of joy I also like um Joe as well as my painting I love thinking like I've started making these um silk scarves so these are oh, my own beautiful. yeah and that's something like I would like to develop too you know it's a different yeah. kind of uh, line of uh, like in the fashion accessories kind of yeah it's something like yeah and even just reading like fashion magazines or these kind of things that's kind of yeah I yeah. love that as well yeah can I ask you are the scarves are you hand painting them on silk is that it no so they're actually digitally transferred from paintings on my own paintings onto silk oh, wow. yeah I just love technology isn't it amazing uh, yeah unreal um, yeah um, I brought out my first collection last Christmas, kind of when I did. Yeah. I rented this big space in town and had a show in it and launched my collection. And like the whole, I just love the whole process. We did like it was very extra. We did like a Vogue photo shoot basically for the skirts, oh, yeah. and I had six models, three like uh, ladies or two ladies in their like twenties and. A guy in his 20s and then three old ladies maybe like in their I'm not sure if they, but they were elderly and like just fabulous like and oh, my yeah. friend who I met through Crawford we you know went to college together but she's a photographer amazing Kui Bahini and we just did a whole photo shoot and it was brilliant and that's something that's like fabulous. I love collaborating with other creatives brilliant. yeah yeah so that's something like that definitely brings me joy is like bouncing off other creators. That's amazing. I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well and I've been wanting to bring out a new one, but because of COVID or during quarantine and everything, their their um warehouse was you know oh, down for a long time. Yeah. And now I put a backlog 
and yeah. actually my new series birds I just love them and I think they would look amazing on silk so I kind of wanted to wait till after them so I think the new year I'll have uh, yeah more and but that's something definitely that I love is collaborating wow that's yeah cool. I love that yeah uh, my mom used to do uh, hand, uh, hand painted scarves. She had her oh, um, for many years and she did hand painted silk scarves. So that's why I did recognize your scarf when you had on. I was like, oh, I wonder is that a hand painted one? But I just yeah. love the technology. It's like that technology probably wasn't around to, uh, like when my mom was no, doing no. it 20 yeah. years ago and stuff, you know? And I just love how things, it's amazing. It just evolves, you know? Scarves by Vera. I'm actually blanking on her surname, but she's popular by Scarves by Vera. Um, yeah. And she was, yeah, an artist maybe in the 60s doing okay. a lot of those. Oh, and she was really inspiring as well to me, you know. Okay. Um, they're amazing. And they're something, yeah, I definitely would love to. And I love the whole having the photo shoot and creating a story, you know. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was just so, we had such a ball, like. Yeah, I uh, thought that you were like, yeah, we went extra. We did, we did a, you know, big. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I was like, oh, the pictures. I printed yeah. them off and wrote Vogue, you know, in Irish, V, O, Father, G, you know, and we had them up yeah. as prints and they were very yeah. <laughs> extra. Yeah. Yeah. But it was so much fun. That's fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, what's next in the pipelines for you then? Are you thinking of, you said you mentioned a, a new series, Eloise. Are you you? What else is going on? Or I guess yeah. that's not you know. So. <laughs> um, so I am at the beginning of the new series. I just I had done a hundred days of birds kind of project, and I'm actually yeah. just have two days left, ninety nine and a hundred to finish. And um, that's Did you where my last. up every day? I I've tried to do things like that in the past, and I just yeah like, the five day challenge. I have difficulty with. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been consecutive let's just say yeah. i have missed like maybe especially around the collection release and stuff yeah, yeah i missed a good like 10 days but now i've caught up with it just doing two or three a day here and there um i haven't been too tough on myself about that because i'm like that just happens you know yeah. but um i have really loved this project like honestly it's been and it's something i would recommend to anyone even at any stage or it doesn't have to be 100 days, like 30 days or whatever. Yeah. If yeah. you want to just play with different tech, like it's such, it was such a freeing project. I didn't care what I was making. You know, I had a theme, obviously, birds, but um, yeah. And since finishing that now, I'm kind of not really finished with birds yet. I'm like, oh no, yeah. I'm really, I started doing, actually, I could show you these little um, ones that where yeah. I've done it. An yeah, underpainting exactly. and then um, have gessoed and white and carved out some shapes of birds and flying. And I think um, that's something I will definitely be playing around for my next collection, especially a lot of birds flying. And I think this time, my work always reflects the time of the year. You know, this time a lot of birds are migrating to somewhere warmer or coming here mm. uh, for the winter. And often, and with all the restrictions as well, we're not, we're unable to fly, you know, ourselves. And, yeah. and that, that's yeah. um, something I'm going to be working on. And I'm also going to be re releasing a new print collection. Oh, wow. So I have a lot of prints to add to my shop. So they're be the two big things. I think. Yeah. That's great. Lots of things going on there, which is fantastic. Yeah. I'm getting very inspired about your 100 days. I think maybe. <laughs> Oh, it's, but I think it was, it's brilliant because it kind of makes you do something and as you said as we talked about earlier on it's kind of that thing of almost setting yourself a goal and working towards it and that challenges you and pushes yeah. you a bit more and I didn't I like didn't set a time like if it was only if I only got five minutes that day you know like yeah. I think make it really easy I bought all the same paper size I had used the same kind of materials every day, so I didn't have to. It was just an easy thing to pick up, and it became such like a little meditation, you know. I yeah, yeah. Little, yeah, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I'm inspired by you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm doing a five day one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is so lovely chatting to you, Eloise. I could chat much longer. Um, but <laughs> I'm also very aware that people might not listen for very, very long. Yeah, you're still here, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Five days <laughs> <minutes later. laughs> <laughs> but it's been so lovely chatting to you Eloise and thank you so much for coming on and loved hearing about your process and what you're doing and um, so yeah about, really uh, you're moving on and about your series and everything can you tell us a bit about where people can find you where where's the best way that they can find you yeah so I suppose my home on the internet is um, eloiseflannery.com my website yeah. And uh, I'm Imagine pretty active. That. Yeah, I'm pretty active <laughs> on Instagram too with Eloise Flannery yeah. and Facebook. Brilliant. Yes. Fantastic. So, okay. You'll Brilliant. find me hanging out. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being the very first artist on season two. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you for having me. Um, it's such a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. And we'll keep in touch, Eloise. Have a good weekend. You too. Okay. Bye, Paula. Bye. Bye.